Okay, so very exciting news. New modules from the MindMeld collection. I collaborated with the MindMeld team and we created a collection of modules that is all about uh, creating your own custom interface and performance controller. If you follow me, if you follow my channel, you know that I like building um, hardware emulations in VCVREC and I always wanted something that will allow me easy access to controls, concentrating on sound design, concentrating on changing different aspects of the sound. So here, for example, I have the Moog Mavis that I built a while ago. I am, by the way, I started updating the different um, builds that I made. So when you download them, you will have also the interface, right? And the interface looks like something like this, right? So now instead of going in the patch and start um, thinking what knob is doing what, I have everything here set up, right? and I can start changing things. Right, concentrating on the controls themselves and not starting to think which cable is going where and when I turn a knob, what is changing. I have this interface here and you can customize it. We will see everything soon enough and you can customize it as you wish. And it's uh, also great for uh, creating a sort of a macro controller, again, a custom micro macro controller that you can use um, to change multiple settings at once with different ranges, right? So here I have a simple voice, right? A few modules from the Surge collection. And I have here two macro controllers. By the way, there is uh, also this module here that is new, the master channel that you can use. And you can see there is also the lovely mushroom here down. <laughs> right, so I have two macro controllers. One will control the brightness, right? So if I turn this, a few things will happen. First of all, have a look. The frequency will change of the filter. The drive will change on the distortion, right? And also the detune on the oscillator. On pay attention, they change with different ranges. Right, I have here another macro controller that is called the ring mode, which will do something like this. Right, so it will change the mix on Tree Monster and will change the parameter on the string VCO. Right, so like this you can also create custom macro controllers, map multiple things with different ranges. So let's really have a look at how everything works, how you can set things up and create your own custom interface. So this is the main module, the patch master module. This is how it will look like when you load it in the right click menu. You can find a few presets in the preset menu, right? Just for quick access to different controls. So if you want, for example, an LFO, you have here the different um, controls of an LFO. If you want, for example, a filter, a VCF, you have them also. But we will start with an empty one just so we can see how things work and how you can set things up by yourselves. Um, the setup I have here is a very simple setup, two oscillators, some noise going through a mixer, a filter, there is an LFO and an envelope, right, just to demonstrate things. Right, just so we can uh, see how things work and how you can set everything up. So first of all, let's add a label so we know what this is controlling. And again, in the right click menu, we can add a separator and we have a divider label. This will add it here. And if I right click it, right, we get different options and I can name it. So for example, I can call this um, VCO, right? And now we can add, for example, the frequency knobs. We can start mapping the frequency knobs of the oscillator. So again, in the right click menu on the module itself, we can add new controllers. I will go with knob, let's say two large knobs that will be bipolar, just like the controllers, just like the knobs on the oscillator, right? And I can duplicate, instead of creating another one, I can just right click the one I have and duplicate it. Right, so I can quickly have two. And then again, right clicking them, I can map up to four different um, parameters. Right, I'm going to map one, start mapping, and then I just click the parameter I want to map. You see there is a blue um, square here that means that it's mapped. And if I move it, right, it will move also the frequency knob. And this will be VCO1. So again, right click, I can enter 
a name, VCO1. Right, so I know exactly what it is. And even, you know what, let's say VCO1 frequency. Right, and then I will do the same with a second knob again, map one in this case, start mapping. I just click what I want to map. Again, right click VCO2 frequency, right? And then we have the frequency of the first one, the frequency of the second one. Right? And like this, I can control, for example, the frequency of the oscillators. Now let's add also the FM knobs, right? The little ones here, because I have them cross modulating each other, right? So we can add also the FM knobs. So let's add another controller knobs. In this case, I'm going with a small one. Again, it will be bipolar in this case, because also the controls or the knobs here on the VCO are also bipolar. Right, and again, I'm going to duplicate them because we have two. And now I want the first the uh, first small knob here, right, to be next to the VCO1 frequency because they are related, they are both, uh, both will be for VCO1. So again, in the right-click menu, there is an option, allow control or command and click drag to move tiles. It's on by default. So if I hold control, I can just drag and move the tiles, move the controllers to different uh, places. Right, so again, let's start mapping them. Controller three will be for the first oscillator and this will be FM, just like this. And since this is under VCO1, I know this is also FM for VCO1. And the second one will be for VCO2, right? So this will be again FM and now, if you have a look, if I zoom out a bit, right? Right, so again, this is a small setup, right? It's just for demonstrating, but now I can just concentrate on what's here without everything else and concentrate, for example, in this case, on the sound design. Okay, now let's add another module. This will be the separator. Right, this will be this one here, and it will connect either from the left or from the right to the patch master module. In the right click menu, right, you can choose to have also a vertical line. So let's have it with a vertical line, right? And now it will look like this. And now let's add some controls for the mixer, right? So I have here oscillator one, oscillator two, and there is also noise going into channel three. For now, it's all the way down. So let's add another patch master. Module, in my case, I have it by default on empty, just because I like to start from the beginning. Again, pay attention to this lovely mushroom here on the left. <laughs> okay, so first of all, let's have the mixer label, right? I want to know that this is the mixer. So again, under new separator divider label, right click, and I can call this mixer. Maybe I will make this something like this, right? Really easy to use, really easy to set things up. Now let's add some faders. In this case, I would like to have faders to control things. Right, so again, right click, add new controller, faders, I'm going with large, let's say, and unipolar in this case, because I want it to start from zero. Right, this is a mixer. Right, so this will be the fader, and I want to have three. I have VCO1, VCO2, and noise. So again, I can just duplicate them really quickly. And now I can start mapping things, right? So the first one will be VCO1, the second one will be VCO2, and the third one will be the noise. And again, I can start naming them, right? So VCO1, VCO2, and then this will be noise. And now again, I have quickly control, I will zoom out a bit. Quickly control, right? I want VCO1. VCO2. Right, and the noise. Right, just like this. Now again, let's add another separator. This one here, again, in the right-click menu. I have it by default empty, but let's just turn this on. And I will add another patch master. In this case, I would like to map the filter. So now instead of creating all of the controls, let's really use a preset. So the preset, 
under the preset menu we have VCF, right? And then we have cutoff, we have FM, resonance, resonance CV, drive, and drive CV, right? So now let's just start mapping things. So the cutoff will go, will be mapped to the cutoff of the filter. The FM as well, because as you will see in a second, I have here an LFO going, right? And modulating the um, frequency of the filter. Also the resonance I would like to control, start mapping resonance, resonance CV in this case I don't need, so in the right click menu I can also delete them, right, and then they will just be removed. Again, the drive I would like also to have, but in this case, you know what, I would like, maybe I will map it, I would like the drive control to be bipolar instead of unipolar, in this preset it's unipolar, so again I can right click, and then if I go to knobs, in this case I know it's a medium one, you see it's unipolar, I can just change it to bipolar, it will save the mapping and everything, so you can like this really experiment and see what works best in your setup. Again, in this case, I don't want the drive CV, so I'm going to just delete it, right, and now I have control over the filter, and again, I just have to concentrate on this here, I don't have to look at the whole patch, again, this is a small example, but imagine a bigger patch, you will see this also in a second, this makes things much easier to control, right, so now I can use the filter, can add some resonance, add some drive, Right, and then add FM. Right, just like this. And now I would like to control also the frequency of the LFO, right, again, from this um, line here. So what I can do, I can add another label, right, if I go to separate or divider label, I can add them also in between, and this will be LFO. Right, and now I can add, let's say I will add another knob, another medium knob, and this, this is a button, another medium knob, and let's say also bipolar, right, and just map this to the frequency of the LFO, and I can call this frequency, right, and now I have... Right, I can have also control over the frequency of the LFO. So again, I have, right. I have control over the frequency, over the FM. I can change the levels. I can change the filter, the FM amount, the frequency of the LFO, right, and so on and so forth. You can see it's really easy to create this setup, especially with the presets, um, and it's really helpful if you just want to concentrate on controlling your patch, on sound design, and so on. Let's have a look at now a, a bit more of a, an advanced example. So in this case, I have a bit of a different setup. I have one oscillator that we listen to, another oscillator that is syncing, right? We had a sync input. The first oscillator, I have here a filter. There is one envelope for the filter, one envelope for the VCA. And here I have already a few things set up just to save time and I can show you a bit more of a, um, advanced, uh, how you can set things up in a bit more of an advanced way, I guess. <laughs> right, so here I have again the oscillator that is sync to the syncing oscillator. I have the VCO envelope generator. Right, that I can change in this case with faders. Here I have the filter. Right, that I can change and I have the envelope for the filter in this case with knobs, just so you can see. You can use any controls you want. Right, and now the first thing I want to do that let's say in this setup I want to be able to quickly switch between two different ways, between the saw wave and between the square wave. Right, and I just want to 
um, change them if it's doing a performance, if it's doing a sound design session, and so on and so forth. So also for this, we have modules exactly for this. They are called the root master. There are four different versions. So there are two mono versions and two stereo versions. Um, we have multiple inputs and one output. Those are basically switches, not sequential switches, but switches. Right, so we have multiple inputs, one output. We have one input, multiple outputs, and we have the stereo versions if you need stereo signals. Right, so I'm going to use the multiple input and one output. Let's call this, in the right-click menu, I can change everything, right? I can change the names. I'm going to call this VCO wave, for example, just so I know what this switch is doing. And then one input will be the saw wave, another input will be the square wave, right? This will go back to the filter. Right, and now I can switch between the um, waves and I can create a controller for this. So this will be here in the VCO section. Of course, those are just multiple patch master modules um, connected together just by being next to each other. Right, so I'm going to right click this area here and I'm going to add a controller. In this case, it will be a button, let's say a large one. And there is a radio button that will be exclusive. And let me show you this, I will show you this in a second. So I'm going to add two of them, so one, and then I'm going to duplicate them and they will work exclusive, exclusively only when they are next to one another. So now only one button can be on. As you can see here, I can switch between the buttons and only one one will be on uh, even if you have multiple of them, but they have to be next to each other. This is the radio buttons, right? So one of them I'm going to map to the saw wave. This will be the first one already. You can see that it took the name of the controller. So if I will call this in the right click menu again, I can change the name. I will call this saw. You see also here it says saw. And the next one, the second one, I'm going to map to the second switch here to the second step and call this, uh, let's say, pulse. Right, and now I can switch between them on the interface itself, right? And like this, I can switch between waves. Uh, you have here five inputs you can switch between, in this case, five different waves or five different of anything, right? And create custom controllers for this. Again, this is the radio button and you have to make sure they are next to one another and they will be exclusive. So you can only select one button at a time. Okay, now let's use a different type of button. And in this case, I want to turn oscillator sync on and off, right? So in this case, the oscillator, the syncing oscillator is going directly to the synced oscillator. There is no on and off button here, but this we can do very simply just with a VCA, right? A VCA will control amplitude of signals. So if I send this oscillator, the syncing oscillator first through the VCA, right? Let's have something like this. Right, I can turn off the VCA, and now there is no sync anymore, I can turn it on. Right, of course you can use any other module for this, there are mute buttons that you can use, and all sorts of different modules you can use to turn things on and off. I chose to use a VCA, so now what we will do, I will add here in the sync VCO section, I will add another button, a new controller, but and again, a large one, in this case, it will be latched. So there is latched or with the inverted light, depending on what you need, right? And the latched one will basically stay on until I click it again, right? And like this, I can turn things on and off and make sure they stay also on and off. And in this case, it will be the VCA, right? So I can just like this open and close the VCA. Again, you can use other modules than VCAs, uh, there are uh, mute buttons, fade uh, um, modules, and so on, right? And this, we will turn this to on, or co uh, call this on, Opa, like this, I cannot use, on or off, right? And now I can turn sync on and off directly from the interface. Now it's on. Now it's off. Right, so again, I can concentrate on sound design. I can concentrate just on the interface itself without overwhelming myself in the big patch 
um, with all the cables and everything. Okay, now let's switch between different filters, right? I have here one filter, but we can switch between different filters. So for example, this will be the VCV low pass filter. I have here tangents that I would like to use as a band pass filter. And I have here nitrous also from Volt that I want to use as a sort of an acid filter. Right, so what we will do, I will disconnect the cables. Right, and I will add another switch. In this case, one input and multiple outputs. Right, so the output of the first switch will go to the second one. I can call this, for example, um, let's call this filters, just so we know what's going on. Right, and then output one will go to the VCV filter. Output two, output two will go to the bandpass filter. Output three will go to the acid filter. Right, and now from there, I will switch also the outputs. Right, so I will use now the multiple inputs and one output, right? So we have the low pass, we have the band pass, and we have the acid filter. And now I can add, for example, another patch master, right? Already I can, for example, add three buttons. And again, they will be exclusive buttons, so I can only choose one, which means I will use the radio button. In this case, it will be the trigger one, right? And I can duplicate it again, one, two, and three, because I need three. Just see how easy everything is, how intuitive. And by the way, here you can see, um, for me, it's a, bit, it's a bit bothering me, right? But there is now um, a different space here, right? They are not really even and I like to have everything even, so I can add also a blank, right? So if I add a separator, a blank separator, I believe this is the XS, right? And I can just drag it up, and now everything is aligned, right? And again, because those buttons are exclusive, they are the radio buttons, I can choose only one. So now what I will do, I will start mapping them, right? The first one will be the first filter and I need to map two things. I need to map the first switch, switch and then with map two, I will map the second switch, right? And let's call this um, Lopez, right? The second controller will be the second switch or the second step, let's say. And again, I need both of them, right? And this will be band pass, right? And now the third one, will be the third step here. And again, I need both switches. So it will, it will switch the inputs and the outputs. And this will be acid. I wish I could add a smiley here. Right, and now I can quickly switch between them, band pass, acid, low pass. Right, and so uh, like this, I can switch between the um, filters and now I have also to map the filters because for now it will uh, filter control here will control only the low pass right so again I can map up to four different parameters so map two will be the cutoff of uh, tangents map three will be the cutoff of nitrous then uh, the FM let's say we will not use in the oh you know what let's let's quickly connect also the FM here why not Right, I can map this and I can map this then in a second. Right, so the FM, FM here, we will map the second one to tangents. The third one we will map to the um, nitrous. And now here, you see I will need a different range, but this I want to show you later in the video. I will not show you this now. Um, so let's just skip this for a second. And then again, the resonance I can map. Right, again, up to three different parameters and also the drive I can map. So map one, we have already map two, right? And then map three. And again, forget about the different ranges now, right? I can concentrate only on the interface. I have just to connect this, of course, back to the VCA, right? Low pass, band pass, and acid. Pulse wave. I can turn on sync. Right, 
Right, so now I can concentrate only on the interface with everything that is set here, with the sync, with the um, different oscillator waves, with the different filters that I can switch between and so on and so forth. Every another build that I updated, um, this is the DFM, I built the DFM a while ago, the Moog DFM, um, such an amazing synth. I updated also a bit to v uh, work in VCV2 better. And I added also, look how beautiful this is. I added also the patch master. Look at this lovely interface in comparison to start and thinking what is going on here and what I have to change. All you have to do is concentrate on the interface itself. We have here the two, <laughs> this is so cool. We have here the two uh, sequencers, right? Uh, right, one for pitch, one for velocity. I have all of the different oscillators and everything, the filters, the noise, and so on and so forth. Even the sequencer itself. Again, I updated this. There will be a link uh, where you can download everything. And um, so I can just start the sequence, right? I can change, for example, the frequency of the oscillators. Close the cutoff. Right, add a bit of envelope, a bit of noise. Right, I can change also. Right, and then I can go ahead and change, for example, the velocity. Right. Just like this, <laughs> this is so cool. Change the waves. Right, and like this, I can even close the volume. And like this, you can create your own interfaces. Again, this is the DFM. This is so beautiful. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Um, but let's have a look at a few more examples. Okay, so now I want to show you how you can use Patchmaster as a sort of a macro controller, controlling multiple uh, parameters with different ranges and create again a performative tool. So here I have uh, some surge modules um, with a nice patch. Um, the sequencer is the probably key um, from Impromptu, right? It will sound like this. And now I want to start adding um, or mapping some parameters that I can control then with just one knob. This will be, let's say, the tone control. You can name it as, uh, as you wish. Right, so we will start with the cutoff control of the filter. So again, right click on the knob and map one, start mapping the frequency. Now, as you can see, it jumped to the bottom here. Um, but I want to map it so it's not starting at zero. I want it to start somewhere at around 11 o'clock. So again, if I right click it, maybe I will go a bit to the right. Maybe zooming out is better, right? So if I right click it, if I go back to map one, I have here unmap, of course, or I can change the range, the minimum and maximum. There are also presets, right? You can invert, you have zero to 50, 25 to 75, 50 to 100, right? But let's make this uh, manually. So if I change the minimum, you can see the filter there is moving, right? This will be the starting point that I want to be here, right? And now when I open this, it will take the filter all the way up. But when I close it, the filter will stay at this position. Right, now there is another option here in the right click menu. If you go to precision, right, this will basically change the precision of the mappings. Um, and you can change this here, of course, uh, the, the better precision, the more CPU this will take. But there's an ad another option here, it says on changes only. Now when this is on, and I have the, for example, now the cutoff uh, mapped, I can still go ahead and manually change the cutoff control, right? And then when I change the um, macro control here, have a look at the cutoff, you will see that it will jump to where the macro controller is, right? But again, I can still go ahead and turn the cutoff if I have this option off. And again, I believe it's on by default. I cannot go ahead and change the filter. Right now it's locked and I can change it only with the macro controller. Right, so again, you have this option, you can turn this on and off. Okay, now let's add also for the drive control on the filter, on the uh, distortion, sorry. 
right, to add some drive. So again, I will go in this case to map two, again, up to four different parameters, start mapping drive. In this case, I want this to start at 50%, right? So if I go to map two, let's use one of the presets here. I will choose 50 to 100, right? But I don't want it to go, of course, to 100. So I can change this now. Let's say, let's take this a bit up. Maybe change this to, let's say about 60%. Right, so now you see it moves the cutoff control as I want and it moves the drive control just a bit. Right, let's do this also for the reverb mix. Let's say when I change this, I want also the mix of the reverb to change. Again, this will um, turn this to zero, but I can change the range, let's say to where it was and then to about, let's say, 70%, let's see. Right? So like this, I can go ahead and change the tone. Let's do this also to the decay of the envelope. So start mapping the decay of the envelope. And in this case, let's just use the um, preset 50 to 100%, right? Or maybe, Make this a bit higher, right? And now I have one control, one knob, right? That I can go ahead and control multiple parameters as a macro controller, right? As a macro controller and change the parameters with different ranges as well. Every another example of something you can try, right? This is another sequence. Right, and here I want different parameters and I have here in this case, I chose to use a fader, right? So first of all, I want to change the sequence range. I have the sequence going through a VCA before the quantizer, right? So I can change the range. So again, right click, map one, start mapping to the VCA. Right, and I already have this apparently with the range set. And now I have also the envelope for the folder. Right, so when the um, sequence changes, I want to map also the um, um, attenuator here, attenuverter, right, and again, I can change this to let's say map to, let me just move a bit, map to, change the range. Let's start with the preset, um, let's say 50 to 100, and then change the range a bit. Right, so it will be just a bit. And now when the sequence changes, I have also the envelope for the fold. And what I have here, I have a copy of this voice going to a VCA and a delay. So I have a sort of a delay send effect. Right, and I want this fader to control this as well. So map three, right, start mapping the VCA. I see it already has a range there. So let me just quickly change this, right? Something like this. And now with one fader, I can change the sequence, change the, or bring in the envelope for the wave folder and send this also to a delay, right? And again, Patchmaster is also amazing for creating an interface for live performances, for full patches. If you just want to concentrate on the uh, parameters you want to change without the clutter and everything um, of the full patch, so you can concentrate on the performance. So here I have uh, an example, a patch example. I have some drums, a kick, a, a snare, a hi-hat, right, some delay, I have a bass here going through all sorts of processing and I have also a sort of an FM lead sound or just a lead sound with some FM on it, right, most of the voices or some of the voices would sound like this, right, and I have here basically an interface that I created, just this one to create the whole patch or almost all of the patch, everything what I wanted to control. Right, so I can mute and unmute voices and I have uh, three macro controllers for creating all sorts of different 
um, transitions, right? So I can, for example, unmute the kick, right? And the hats. And all from just this interface. Right, I also have here a macro controller for the hi-hat that has two uh, mappings, one for the decay of the hi-hat and one for the filter on the delay. Right, so I can mute, unmute and perform my whole patch from here. Right, in this case, by the way, the uh, muting of the FM voice is mapped to a fade in on the mixer. Right, so it will fade in and will fade out. Right, and I can do stuff like this. So I can really perform my patch and again concentrating just on a small interface instead of the whole patch moving, uh, um, um, being afraid of disconnecting stuff, of moving different uh, parameters that you should not move. Like this you can concentrate only on the performance and again you can also map Patch Master to a, an external MIDI controller, right? So here I have, this is my uh, MIDI LAR controller, I will put uh, links in the description if you are interested. This is basically a MIDI controller and I have here as you can see the MIDI map module that I can just go ahead and for example map the hi-hats. Right, so I map this macro controller with all of the settings, all of the range settings and so on, right, and I can continue like this, map more things. So really you can concentrate on the performance instead of overwhelming yourself with uh, never mind how big or how small your patch is. So just a few more small things I want to mention just so we cover almost everything with these modules. Um, so again, if you right click the main module, there are different settings here. So you can show mapping lights, for example, if you want to turn on and off the lights from the mapping, you can show the knob arcs, right? So you can hide these lines here, right? If I turn this off here, right? And of course, things will probably save a bit of CPU, I guess, right? Um, you can also show and uh, hide the blank tiles, right? So you can also do again, you have this uh, control command and drag to move tiles. Uh, the precision we uh, looked at already. You can also unmap all of the controllers if you want to quickly unmap everything. And again, there are presets, have a look in the presets, just so um, it's quicker to create things. Now, in the right click menu of the controllers themselves, there are also some options uh, that I want to show you. For example, um, the colors, right? So here in this case, this button is red. I can change this, for example, to purple and have all sorts of different colors, right? If you want to customize this even further. Right, um, again, the mappings we looked at. You can also move controls um, from the right click menu if you don't want to hold control or command. Right, so this is, for example, the medium button. If I want to move this to uh, the top to the instead of the small knob, right, I just click it and you see it just moved it there. Right, we can also copy and paste controllers also between different modules, right? But for this, you will need a controller. So I cannot uh, paste anything here. I will need to add anything, right? If I add a small knob, right? But I want to copy and paste the button. So I just right click, copy, and then paste it on this knob. And then I have exactly the same. Of course, this will be without the mappings. Right, anything else here? Yes, we can also hide modules and this, right? Um, if I hide them, I can unhide them from here. We have here in the right click menu of the module itself, we have visibility, right? And you can see, if you hold control, by the way, you can select and deselect 
multiple options, right? So you can hide and show different modules. And by the way, now as you can see, there is no more space here, right? So if for example, I want another small knob and I just duplicate it, you see, now something went away here, the big knob, and it's not visible, right? Because there is no space, right? So you will need to unhide things to bring it back. Right, so just uh, make sure that if you don't have space and you add something and something disappears, you can al always bring it back from the right-click menu. And as I mentioned, there is also the, the new module, right, the master channel, stereo in, stereo out, or mono in, stereo out, and so on and so forth, right, which is basically the master channel from the mind meld mixer, right, so you can add this to your synthesizers, uh, to the um, your synth builds and so on, and your patches. And it has all of the different settings from the mixer, right? You can add a dim, you can add a DC blocker, change the VU, clipping. You can also add fade, right? So if you can fade also stuff in and out, right? As you can see here, right? Instead of just muting them, you have, you can turn things into mono also. And again, you have the dim here just to take the levels down quickly. And of course, you can also change the names here or the tags or the labels and that was it thank you again mind meld and for this amazing edition thank you for the collaboration this was great i'm really happy with how this turned out i hope you will also be happy with this and use it this is big <laughs> this is a great edition really um, yes, so go download this, go start using it. If you have any questions or feedback, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching and cheers.